Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am Danielle, AKA Stitcherista here on YouTube. And today is Friday, February 25th. So today would have been my grandparents 73rd wedding anniversary. Yeah. Um, they made it to 71 years married. Wow. Just, <laughs> yeah. And, um, the picture that my mom had gotten me for Christmas that has like the saying about people are never really gone. It's just goodbye for now or whatever. It has a picture of them and it said happy, I want to say 68th. And I'm like, man, it's amazing what five years does, you know, as far as when you get to be their age. Um, I don't know. I don't think that picture though was from, I don't know. I'm babbling already. So I had off work again today. Our job canceled at about two o'clock yesterday. So, you know, I always keep tabs on our email to see if anything else is going to come in, but nothing else came in. So enjoy the day off today. So because of that, I stayed up last night and I worked a bunch on my Viking piece. Now we're going to have a chat <laughs> and I'm going to show you why. So I got done all of the lettering and then I started on the Viking. Remember I converted the DMC colors to Salky. Salky only has, I want to say, I don't know how many colors are in their line, but they don't have like a bunch of flesh tone colors. So the color I actually picked, it's almost like white. And when I stitched his arms, cause this is what this is. When I stitched his arms, it didn't really show up. And I said, you know what? I'm going to back stitch it. And this is his belt buckle, which was supposed to be in gold. And I might even pick out the black. I might stitch it with petite treasure braid. I'm really considering doing that. So then what I'm probably going to do is when I stitch his face, I mean, most of his, most of the top here is his beard and his hair. His face is probably only like a strip. I'm probably going to back stitch that as well just to, I don't know. We'll have to see, I'll have to see how it looks. So yeah, I was like, uh, and the brown colors I picked didn't quite, I don't know. Um, the piece is still going to look cute and the whole purpose is, you know, because Bill's a Viking, right? So thinking ahead, because I tend to do that with cross stitch, thinking ahead to the next piece I'm going to stitch for my junk journal, which is the coffee first evil schemes later, the woman has a lot of skin showing and the two colors, I forget what they are. I've become intrigued and can we talk about my hair for a second before I go on? Okay. So today when I sat down to do my hair, I was like, oh, I'm going to do the bun again because I really like that look. And what I use is I have like those small, clear, stretchy ponytail holders because just putting this in here would never get that ponytail like that. So I put the clear band on and make the ponytail, which really because the bands are small, so you can get like a good ponytail. And I have a billion of these ones with different designs. These are like wired, so you can like form these little tails. I got them off Amazon. And I'm like, I'm going to do that. I'm going to start wearing my hair like that probably maybe. So you're going to be seeing that hair. So I think it turned out pretty cute though. I like it. Okay. Yesterday I was perusing Instagram and coffee stitcher Garrett, he loves stitching with Aurifil. I think that's how you say it. Aurifil reminds me of Salky in the fact that it has a 12 weight. It has 12 weight thread. Salky is 12 weight. They also have floss. And they also have like 50 weight. I mean, because it's used for quilting also. And it all comes on spools, which love that. So he has like this really nice set of it. And I went, I was, so my husband and I were waiting for dinner to get done. We had, um, hamburger helper, potato stroganoff, chef's kiss. Love that. 
and we had time. We had like 20 minutes. So we were sitting there and I was looking on my phone and I was like, I said to Bill, I said, yeah, I said, I really like this Aurifil thread. But when I went to look at it, the, the 12 weight, if you get the 54 yard spool, it's like $5 and 20 cents a spool. The thread's made in Italy. I know that. And, uh, I was like, I'm going to go look and see, cause Garrett had like a set and it came in this really pretty case. I said, I'm going to go look and see what it costs for the entire set. Um, in 12 weight, there are 270 colors. That is a far cry. That is far exceeds what is in the Salky line, which would be easier for converting, right? I almost dropped my phone. I almost dropped it because there was a seller on Etsy that is selling the entire line. Now, they, if you order it from them, they'll have to order it from Aurifil and it's going to take four to six weeks to get it. Are you ready? You can kind of do the math in your head if you do 270 times five, right? The retail price of the whole set of 270 is $1,500. This seller on Etsy had it listed for $1,199. I said, are you even kidding me right now? And Bill was like, wow. And uh, he said, I wish I could just tell you to buy it. And I'm like, he said, when I sell the boat, because he still has another boat that he's going to sell. He says, when I sell the boat, go ahead and buy it. I was like, I don't know if I can spend $1,200 on thread. Right? That seems a lot. I would love to have the threads though. So instead, what I tried to do, because he's not going to sell the boat for a couple of months, so I'll have time to like peruse and ruminate and think about it. I'm like, do I really want to spend $1,200 on thread? Mm. It would probably be a really good investment. I would absolutely use the threads and love them. Just that price tag. Um, I've spent that on fabric, though, over the course of a year, right? When you really think about it. Like, if I want to, I should start saving now. That may be something I will do. We should all be able to have the things that we want, right? Bills are paid. Things are good. Yeah. Okay. So I decided to go on that seller's, on Etsy. I think it's called Twisted Threads is the store. I said, I'm going to look up what flesh colors for RF filler out there. And it looks like there's two, as far as I could see. So... I bought those two spools from this seller. Plus I bought, they had a set that was like teal, pink, purple. I'm like, I want to see what this thread feels like. So when those come in, we'll be taking a peek. And I am probably going to have to be stitching something else. The thread shipped, but I'm not going to get them till next week. I'm probably going to be done the Viking before, I don't know. But yeah, so that's my thoughts on that. Have any of you used the RFL 12 weight? What do you think about it? Give me some details down below. Okay, so yeah, got a lot of stitching done. And I finished the Girl Before on HBO Max that was based on the J.P. Delaney book. Really liked it. Really, really liked it. And... I did get my spool thing that I ordered from Etsy in the mail yesterday. It's gorgeous. Okay. So it is from the store on Etsy. I will link it down below. It is called Miles Creative Designs. And it is called a bobbin holder. And he actually has... That's the notification I just got on my watch that my thread shipped. Yay. Okay. It's coming from Oregon, so I don't know how long that will take. He has seven other ones of these on there. Um, they're $40 and it was $10 shipping because he shipped it like really packaged in this box. So are you ready? Doesn't that look cool and vintagey? And let me like kind of try to tilt it without these coming out. There are spokes in here. See the acrylic spoke? He put spokes in there. So you can hold the spools and you can hold up to 16. I, this was perfect when it came in the mail and on the bottom, it's like acrylic too. And he put like scrapbook paper there and he put the feet on it. Oh my God. I mean, if you go all the way around, you can see, and this trim here is leather. 
I'm in love. I absolutely love it. And it looks so fantastic to hold the spools, doesn't it? Miles Creative Designs. I will link it down below. Like I said, they're about 50 bucks with shipping because it was 40 bucks and then well worth it. Absolutely. Okay. Facebook. Oh, let's talk about Wordle today. I've got some of you guys playing it. Got mommy playing it. Mom's playing it now. Today's word. The first two guesses. Now, I always start with the same word. I'm not going to say what the word is because people get their panties in a twist about that kind of stuff. I start with the same word. My first two guesses, I had zero letters correct. And I thought, oh, here we fucking go. Like, all right. The third guess, now I guess completely different letters, obviously, each time because if the letters don't light up, they are not in the word. So you know you don't have to use them. The third guess, I had one letter right. And I'm like, all right. And I sat there for a long time and tried to look. I mean, I had used 5, 10. I had used 14 out of the 26 letters in the alphabet. Think about that. So, and 15 because of the one letter that was right. So there was only 11 letters left. So I'm like, all right, I, I, I got to figure this out because I'm on the fourth try here. You only get six tries. And I got the word on the fourth try. And somebody on Facebook, because I post my progress on Facebook every day, and somebody was like, wow, that was impressive that you got that only having one letter correct. And I'm like, I looked at that for so long. I love it though. And some of you have suggested the other versions of it. I'm sticking with, no. <laughs> and there is an app because I do have the Wordle app where you can just do as many as you want. Bill and I were playing around with it. I like the New York Times one because everyone has one shot. I get up in the morning and I'm like, let's go. I know with my word, the word that I start with, I know there will be a day that I'm going to get it on the first try. I'm going to get lucky one of those days. I know it. I know my word's going to be the word. Okay. Yeah, I just still can't believe that I figured it out on the fourth try. All right. Talking points. Oh, yeah, the talking point. Okay, we're going to do the OMG moments first because the talking point I actually have printed out. All righty. I have five OMG moments to show you guys. So Bill and I tonight are um, going to Mission Barbecue for dinner. We always get it and, and bring it home. Love Mission Barbecue. And then tomorrow, he wants to get Ann's Footlong for lunch. So, you know, Ann's Footlong is, there's only one. It's in right in our area. It has been around for like, over 50 years when the mall was built behind it they tried to buy them out and they refused they have the best um foot long hot dogs and i usually get cheeseburger sub they used to have really good milkshakes bill was like i've been just craving that we have I, it's been years since i've eaten there and i said well why don't we do that for lunch tomorrow and he's like yeah he said because i think i'm actually going to go to charlise's futsal game with you and i'm like really he never goes um her game is at 240 so I know my mom and Chuck, my mom and my stepdad will enjoy seeing him at the game. And it's very exciting. And the game's only 50, 40 minutes, two 20 minute periods. And they take a two minute intermission. So it goes by very, very quick. And it's something to do. Yeah. Now my hair appointment got switched. Um, I was supposed to March 5th, I was supposed to have a hair touch up because you can see the gray coming in, right? I don't care. I really don't care about that. Um, but the red streaks fade very quickly and she messaged, she texted me the other night and said, can we do your appointment on Friday? And I said, no, I said, because I need Saturdays because I work Monday through Friday. I said, I can do sun a Saturday, March 12th. So it's going to be another week. But what's nice about that is I have a massage on March 5th. Remember the whole thing where my hair gets oily underneath and I washed my hair the last time and I shouldn't have. And they say you should wait like 72 hours after you get your hair dyed to wash it. 
So I will be able to do that this time because I'm going to get my hair done on, on Saturday, March 12th, and I don't have a massage. So yeah. Oh, and also, I know I'm just all over the place today. I should go and get it and show you. Hold on. I'm going to show you. Okay. So I am always on the lookout for like good snacks because there are times through the work day that I don't really have the time. Um, <laughs> I'm laughing because when I got up to get what I'm going to show you, I have my boss's email pulled up because I have to monitor it all day, you know, for jobs. And she accepted a job for March 2nd. And when I clicked on the notice of deposition, I was like, we've had that case before. And I don't, why is that sound familiar? And I just saw, um, a response from her. Then she's like, no, I can't take that because that's like on my no fly list. Like it must've been a horrible case that we took. I don't remember that. Probably PTSD, right? Okay. Anyway, I am always looking for like a good snack, something small to eat because I'm still always on the quest of finding the right balance, not really trying to limit so much what I eat, but how much of it I eat. Right. And I was watching Amberlynn Reed, which I don't know if you watch her. <laughs> she is someone who is about 500 pounds and she's always on a weight loss journey. And she bought these what's called Hillshire snacking small plates. She called this Lunchables for adults. Okay. But it has salami. And then one of them has pepperoni. Salami, um, white cheddar cheese, and then like toasted rounds. So this would, and this is three, believe it or not, all of this together is 310 calories. So I'm guessing it's pretty filling because it's also... 16 grams of protein. Um, and it's only 11 carbs for the whole thing. So, but not that I'm, I'm counting any of that stuff anymore. But so I can't wait to try these because between like, if I eat an early breakfast and then not eat anything till dinner, I'm usually starving and I don't like to do go into it starving. So got a couple of these to try. So let me know if you guys have tried these and what one's your favorite because I tried to get every one they had they were out of one of them though. I got like four different ones. And then I love ice cream. I don't know too many people that don't. So when Bill and I went to Harris Teeter a couple weeks ago, we, I said, let's get some ice cream. And we like to get pints because we both tend to like different ice cream. And I came upon this Talenti, which by the way, people use these jars for orts. Talenti Gelato Layers Vanilla Fudge Cookie. This is the best one I've ever had. It has like crunchies in, in this layer and fudge and then crunchies. So Jill, so I ate this, right? Jill texted me sometime last week and she's like, oh my God, I have the most awesome ice cream. I've just been taking like little bites out of it. And she said it was this one. And I'm like, oh my God, I had that last week. So I got two of these, one for me and one for Bill, because I think he would like it. And they also had another one of the layers. The layers are the ones I like. I don't like the one where it's just straight ice cream. I need stuff in it, right? I got one. It said salted caramel crunch or salted caramel something. You know, that's going to be good. <laughs> you know, it's going to be good. So, yeah, so good. Okay, so OMG moments, and I need to be careful and not let that melt too much while we're sitting here talking. I'll probably, before I do the talking point, I'm going to go put that stuff back. But I'll show you the OMG moments, and then I'll pause again. All right, so this is a Heaven and Earth Designs. This is by Julie Hollinshead, and she is working on Mini Enchanted Castle by, I'm not even going to say the name. She's working it on 14 count Ada with two strands. See, this is what I love to see because you can work a heaven and earth designs on any count and it's gorgeous. And I had a question by one of my subscribers and they asked me, would I ever do a heaven and earth designs? What are my thoughts? I own a few of them. Will I ever stitch them? Probably not, especially not now that I'm into like the junk journal stuff and doing smalls. 
To me, it's just too big. It would take me too long. I think I would lose interest. But they're gorgeous. I love seeing them. So look at, I mean, this is on 14 count Ada. Look at that. Look at that pumpkin. Are you kidding me right now? 14 count Ada. Let's go, Julie. Like, that's freaking fantastic. Okay. Now, this one, and I don't know, this is by Susan Nesbitt, and I don't know. Oh, this is a kit. So, this is 18 count Ada. I am stunned by this one. It is called, who is it by? It's called The Glance. And the kit is Shiny Shuns Cross-Stitching. I, I don't even have words. I would love to know how many strands she's using. She has to be using more than two strands. Did someone ask her that? Wait a minute. I know you're dying to see it, but let me see something. I'm trying to see if someone asked her how many strands. If not, I'm going to ask her. Nope, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask her though. Okay. Look at that. Is that not beautiful? Look at the shading in the brown. It reminds me of Weeks Dye Works Chris's Bonbon, the floss. Oh my god. Right? And you can see where she has, she's working in that little tiny hoop up there. This is magnificent. Like, I couldn't stop staring at it. I stared at it for like five minutes. Seriously. Okay. This one is gorgeous too. This is by Saja. The, this is the person that posted it. So this kit is from Needle Art World. Now, I think this is cross stitch because it looks like it's gridded. I thought this was really pretty though. She's, she doesn't like the brown. But, I mean, the middle of these flowers are brown. Gorgeous, right? My God. Stunning. Absolutely stunning. Yeah, middle of a sunflower is brown. What are you going to do? All right. This was done by a man named Tomas. He did two of these. So let me click on it. I'm going to show you one and then show you the other. Now, keep in mind, that whole thing is stitched. All of that scrolling work is stitched. Yes. Isn't that beautiful? And you can see how big it is. And then, well, here's, here's Tomas. Let's go, right? And then look at this. <gasps> Looks like Audrey Hepburn. Oh, my God. Gorgeous work, Tomas. And the last one is a paint by numbers because let me tell you, remember I have that paint by numbers out there of the lady and the fox that Joanne painted for me. She said she went over that three times when she painted it. And my stepdaughter for Christmas, somebody got her a paint by numbers picture of her and her boyfriend. And she's like, oh my God, she showed me a picture of it. So this is stunning. Because these aren't easy by any stretch. Of, look at that. There we go. Oh my God, right? Love. Yeah, that one that Joanne did uh, for me with the fox. And I mean, she lives in the UK. So she shipped that all the way from the UK. We'll treasure that forever. Okay. We are going to do a motivational story. And of course, our unfuck entry for today. But. The talking point for today, wait a minute, I'm trying to find, okay. Remember the cross stitch magazine I told you about, the down the rabbit hole needlework? They printed an article in one of their issues and said, so you want to be a YouTube star. So that caught my eye, right? Because over the almost six years I've had this channel, there have been a lot of people that have asked me, how do I start a channel? How can I blah, blah, blah. 
And, you know, sometimes it's hard to put into words exactly because a lot of the things that I, you learn along the way. So I thought we would go through this and I would give you my thoughts because some of these I agree with and some that I don't. But again, it's all relative. There's, it's not that they're wrong or I'm wrong. Okay. Number one, appearance. <laughs> they say... Make sure you are wearing clean clothes. Being nude or nearly nude in a crafty video is not an option. Make sure the clothes you are wearing do not contain this morning's bacon and egg muffin and half the cup of coffee you spilled down the front of your shirt. Also, make sure the clothes you are wearing are not see-through. Secondly, pull out that hairbrush or whatever you use and give your hair a bit of a swish. You don't have to look like you walked just walked out of a hair salon. But clean and brushed is always good. It is not good to show up to your video looking like you just rolled out of bed. You know, sometimes I think it, sometimes I just get in my head. I just want to film. I've filmed in my pajamas before a handful of times just because I wanted to get whatever thoughts were in my head out. Most of the time I'm put together though. Like this is how I look all day today, right? Number two, I can emphatically agree with because someone said I should do this and ever since I've been doing it my videos have been exponentially like crystal fucking clear wipe the screen right wipe the lens on your camera they said whether you are using your phone or a camera make sure to clean the lens and the screen with the soft cloth we don't need to watch a video through a lens that looks like it's been licked by 15 puppies yeah I mean because I'll talk on the phone in the morning with Bill and where the camera is, the lens, it is right where my ear would be. So I do. Every time before I turn on, I wipe the lens. It is astounding the difference. So that's something that's very easy. Number three, background. Now, this is where I kind of disagree. They say you may not think backgrounds are important, but they can be. You don't have to have a professional background. But just make sure there is nothing distracting there. They said if you are filming in front of your closet in your bedroom, make sure to close the door because you don't want your audience to be distracted by the large cooking pot or whatever that's in there. And you can see I, I like to film in my office because all my stitching stuff is here. And some of this, though, back here may be a distraction, but I love it. I love the orange chair and my Vera Bradley bag and my Elizabeth diamond painting back there. Um, I don't think I would film in front of an open closet door, but I have, I never really think about that. I would not, um, don't like be stressed out or something trying to find like the perfect setup. You know what I mean? Um, I remember there was a time a while ago I had a subscriber that constantly commented on my background. Um, they're like, it's distracting to see the diamond painting boxes back there. Can you move your thread box over this way? I mean, it went on for like three or four videos and then I blocked them because I was just like, what the fuck? <laughs> no. Um, it's life. You you know, I would rather have, have videos from someone who is relatable and yeah, I don't, that's just me though. Okay, number four, yawning. Well, she said, now I get it. We all lead busy lives and we love our crafting and may spend too much time doing that instead of sleeping. If you're going to turn the camera on, make sure you've had a nap, 15 cups of coffee or whatever you need to stay awake. It says also, if you are a yawning video creator, either yawn and edit it out or stop the video and yawn and then turn it back on. <laughs> okay, I don't know. I'm I probably yawned on camera. Um, I know there are a couple of us that have burped on camera. That kind of stuff really doesn't bother me. Um, I watch videos because I like the person that's doing the video. We're all human, right? Okay. Animals. And they say I love animals just as much as the next person, but be careful of having them in your videos. Someone and they say what I I love seeing your animals, but what I don't love is your cat or dog or ferret behind you on your bed cleaning themselves in the naughty bits <laughs> or having a big old fight. 
So stop the video, sort that out. Yeah, you know, when we had, we haven't had pets in a couple years, but um, people could hear Layla snoring in the background. That was something I wasn't stopping. Um, cause we had, you know, my office was a very different setup when we had the dogs because we had a big dog bed and everything in here. Um, I had her in my video sometimes cause she liked to sit up with me in the chair. Um, but yeah, like when the doorbell would ring and she would bark, I usually would pause the video. I want to say didn't happen that much, but yeah, I, I would say just be conscious of that. Right. I love to see pets in people's videos. All right. Number six says always stay on screen. Once you start the video, if you have to lean over to get something on the floor or over on a table, that's fine. But they say what I'm talking about is when you're telling a story and you wander away to another room still telling the story. Well, yeah, I mean, you can't wander off unless you're carrying the camera with you on the tripod because we're not going to be able to hear you, first of all. If I have to get up nine times out of ten, I will pause the video, just like I did to go get the ice cream and the snack thing. And the last one, <laughs> smoking. I don't smoke. I've never smoked. So this doesn't apply to me. They said, now I'm not against anyone smoking, but don't light your cigarette and then turn on the camera. We don't need to see your cross stitch whips with you having a smoke hanging out the corner of your mouth. I wonder who has done that, that has prompted that because I'm imagining that someone that they've watched has done that. I've seen a couple people vape. It doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother me. Um, Okay. I remember when I did my first video, I thought it was a hot mess and I tried to film it like eight different times. And then I said, okay, F it. I'm just going to film it. You just have to get in there and start doing it. You will find your way. Um, you will find what, you know, the biggest piece of advice. And I've told everybody this who has ever wanted to start a channel. Well, two things. One, be yourself. Be authentic because if you're not, subscribers or viewers are going to be able to pick up on it. It's going to carry through. Number two, do not do it for the money. Hell motherfucking no. Um, you have to do a channel because you love the channel. You love what you're talking about. You love to share whatever you're talking about with people. Unless you're like someone who winds up getting a million something subscribers, you're not going to make a ton of money. No, you're just not going to do it. Um, and, uh, number three, I know this is easier said than done because I am guilty of this so many, um, times, but I think I finally learned my lesson. Um, ignore the haters, block them. It's the easiest thing you can do. Um, and when you block, now here's a little, here's a little tidbit cause I did some research on this. When you block someone on YouTube, when you hide them from your channel, it doesn't mean they can't watch your channel because they can. They just can't engage with you if you do a live in the chat or they can't comment on your videos, which is fine by me. Um, and you always have the option to, you can unblock somebody. All right. So today's motivational little feel good story, this one is called God's Days. And again, this is easier said than done, but it's something I really, really try to impart. There are two days in the week upon which and about which I never worry. Two carefree days kept sacredly free from fear and apprehension. One of these days is yesterday. Yesterday, with its cares and fret and pains and aches, all its faults, its mistakes and blunders, has passed forever beyond my recall. It was mine. It is God's. Yeah, easier said than done, but moving forward, right? You can't change what happened. The other day that I do not worry about is tomorrow. Tomorrow, with all its possible adversities, its burdens, its perils, its large promise and performance, its failures and mistakes is as far beyond my mastery as its dead sister yesterday. Tomorrow is God's day. It will be mine. There is left then for myself but one day in the week today. 
Any man can fight the battles of today. Any woman can carry the burdens of just one day. Any man can resist the temptation of today. It is only when we willfully add the burden of these two awful eternities, yesterday and tomorrow, such burdens as only the mighty God can sustain that we break down. It isn't the experience of today that drives men mad. It is the remorse of what happened yesterday and fear of what tomorrow may bring. These are God's days. Leave them to him. Basically, it's just saying live in the present. It's much easier said than done, obviously. I mean, you may worry about a job interview or a loved one's in the hospital or whatever. Um, but you really only have the current moment right this minute. That's all you have. We're not promised tonight. Um, so I really, really try to just literally enjoy, like when I have a day off like today, when I stitched last night for a couple of hours, I enjoyed that time immensely. Spending time with Bill, um, going to my sister's, you know, stuff, all that kind of stuff. Um, it is going to a retreat. Yeah, you literally just have that minute right then. So please, please enjoy it. Be kind as much as you can. Stitch, diamond paint, paint, do whatever. Read. I finished a book. I am killing it, killing it on my Goodreads challenge. Let me show you, let me tell you how many books I've read. I've read 13 books already this year. Yeah. <laughs> I set a goal. Now, last year I read 51 books, I think. I had set a goal of 50. This year I've set a goal of 60 books. I am five books ahead of schedule. Let's fucking go. Let's go. So I finished The Broken Vows, I think I told you. And I absolutely love Frida McFadden's books. I started reading. Let me look it up. I started reading one yesterday. Where is it? Why? Why isn't it show? Just give me a minute here. It's called brain damage. So after, here's the premise. After years of hard work, now this is also available on Kindle Unlimited, so I don't have to pay for it, yay. After years of hard work, Dr. Charlie McKenna finally has it all. Prosperous career as a dermatologist? Check. Spacious apartment overlooking Central Park? Check. Handsome lawyer husband? Double check. Then one night, a bullet rips through the right side of her skull and she loses everything. As Charlie struggles to recover from her brain injury, she begins to realize that the events of that fateful night are trapped in the damaged right side of her brain. Now she must put the jigsaw pieces together to discover the identity of the man who tried to kill her before he finishes the job. And it's pretty good. Um, the book goes, I didn't mean to click on that. The book goes back and forth between present day where she's recovering from the bullet and then two years ago where she is still the doctor, the dermatologist, she meets her husband, blah, blah, blah. Frieda McFadden's, I've liked every single one of her books that I've read. So no doubt I will like this one as well. And I am already with that book. Let's see where I'm at with it. I'm 11% done. You know what really? Okay. I'm on page 42 of 334. It really bugs me. And this is just a little pet peeve of mine. When a Kindle book doesn't show the page numbers, it just shows the location. Sometimes you can't get to the page number. You can tap on that spot and it will like cycle through. Sometimes they don't give you the page numbers. It bugs me. All right. Okay. When we change our perspective on love, it changes how we talk about love. It changes the stories we tell. And those change the actions we take. Watch your relationships grow and flourish in this newfound relationship to love and all that it offers. You know, just the slightest change in our perspective, I think, has a ripple, has a ripple effect um, over a whole bunch of things. Yeah, um, even the slightest, like, 
taking five seconds to think before you respond to someone. And I say that because sometimes I'm just like, Bleh! I need to take five seconds. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I hope you guys all have a great Friday. I'm going to get to work on my Viking. He's like all beard and hair right there. Yeah. So I'm going to get to work on that. Put away my ice cream because I can see it melting. <laughs> so have a good Friday. As always, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section below and I will answer them to the best of my ability. Thank you so much for watching and subscribing and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.